Dave here, how are you? Today on the show, we're going to have a look at making a dust port for my little trim router table down the end here. Now, not everyone has got one of these big monster machines over in the corner here, and I totally get that. So what I'm going to do today is we're going to bring it right down to working on a budget using a $60 vacuum cleaner with a cyclone in it for dust extraction. And I have my little DeWalt trimmer underneath here that I will actually be doing a little bit of dovetailing work with, with the Gifkins jig. Now, the thing is with the Gifkins jig or similar jigs, when you're using them, the sawdust that's created from the router goes straight out away from, from where you're working. And it's rare that it can get pulled down under the table using a conventional port like this one. So the job we're doing today is making this dust port out of a bit of plywood and we're going to use that's the ordinary vacuum cleaner you know $60 model from Big W and the whole thing is going to be powered again by this guy here now the difference this week is that I don't have the second battery on top it's just the Jackery on the Jackery Explorer 2000 plus on its own I was asked a lot last week what's happening with now the other thing on the show is we're going to be doing a giveaway for some G6 eye muffs. And we're going to be also having a look at the um, GoFundMe for John Lafferty. And it's gone fantastic. It's got to six and a half thousand odd dollars. And let's get it up to 10. So that when he's had his heart surgery, like new heart, new kidneys, not <laughs> that's no small potatoes. Anyway, here we go. See you soon. Dave here, how are you? Magic! Dave here, how are you? Today is the 3rd of December 2023. The year is almost done, done, dead, died, done. Don would have sufficed to do all of those words. Anyway, today on the show, I've written myself a small list. I hope everyone's had a good week. Uh, you'll notice I've got the Jackery, I've got the little camera down here. You can see this angel straight at the screen. It's not running the computers this week because I wanted to show you a couple of features about it as well, but we're going to run all of the machines with it. Now this week we're doing the iMuffs G6 giveaway. Now these guys are a little bit more intense than the standard iMuffs that I normally wear. Now they have this big rubber seal across the top here and across the bottom. There is already a little separation in the lens at the front there, but basically it's a, uh, I don't know, maybe it's a reinforcing section, but you'll have a hard time breaking these. Don't go and try and break them because that won't make George happy. And the uh, ear protection is great. Now, these are not the Bluetooth model. I also have the Bluetooth model, but we are giving away a pair of G6, the standard model. These work brilliantly. I will be using these during the show today. I love using these on the lawnmower, not put it on the lawnmower itself. Put it on me while I'm using the lawnmower. It's great whippersnippering, all that kind of stuff, which is, you know, a weed eater, lawn trim, line trim, or whatever you want to call it. That's what they're for. So in the video description down the bottom, if you're on TV, you're not going to see that. So you're going to have to jump on a phone or a computer. Go down the bottom. The link for entering this is down there. There are also useful links down there. And as you saw at the beginning of the video, this video has a paid promotion, and it's this guy here. Part of the deal about the Jackery people giving me that uh, Explorer 2000 Plus was I do a couple of live streams, a dedicated video, and some stuff about the solar panels. Now, I've got one more video to do about the solar panels and also about hooking the batteries up. So stay tuned for that. It's not going to happen today, but it will be coming soon. The GoFundMe is going fantastic. This is for John. I did mention that in the beginning. It's such a worthwhile cause to help him out. And I had a gentleman ring me up during the week and said, Dave, he knows me. He doesn't know John from a bar of soap. He said, Dave, I want to help this guy out. 
I've got no idea to how to do GoFundMe. What do I do? And I said, well, look, I'll give you the link. You can click that. Or if you want to, pay into my bank account. I have a little private bank account and I will do the donation on your behalf. So you'll see there was a $200 donation from Anonymous and that was from John and John cut. Everyone got John is the name for people like John and David, I guess were common names around the time that I was born. So John from John's Car Removals. This is a guy who buys old cars and has a scrap metal yard, all that kind of stuff. Lovely guy in Lawson. <laughs> and me down, he just rang me up and said, Dave, I want to help this guy. That is so good. And he said, in the future, if you've got any worthwhile causes like this, give me a shout. I'd love to help them. So thank you very much for that, John. Now, I also have said that I will read everyone's name out who has donated. Let's do it now. Why not? I'm going to read down the side here while I'm opening the phone up. Um, John, morning. John, <laughs> Eric, morning. Sean, are you awake, Sean? He's over in Wales. Carl AV is looking good. Thank you, Carl. Graham Bland, good morning. John, big thanks to all the GoFundMe support. It has made a huge difference. John was at St. Vincent's again this week, just gone for massive testings. And they had gave him a, knocked him out. They gave him a general. That's the amount of testing that they had to do for him. And I think this is just about one more to go. And then he's at the top of the list. As soon as there is a donor available, he's top of the list of the whole country, which is fantastic. And we're trying to help him out after the operation, after he's finished the first month in hospital. That's for the two months that he has to stay in Sydney, live there, and it's a huge cost. You know what? Sydney real estate is the, probably the most expensive real estate in the world, without a joke. Correct me if I'm wrong there, but renting in Sydney for two months is going to cost him a fortune. Okay, coming down here, Graham. Excellent. Wayne, morning. Glenn Barrett, morning. Watching live for a change today. Thanks, Glenn. Um, John gives my G6 IMAPs arrived earlier in the week. Really love them, and they work great. Excellent. The boys at the men's shed are all MPS. Well, tell them to enter the competition. Jump on the, tell them, watch the show, enter the competition and win their own. Uh, just about awake, are you? Okay, I'm going to read this list. So bear with me while I go through this because it's something that I did say to people. I would do that, you know, do a donation and I will read your name out on the show. Now, for some people, they'll go ho-hum. Other people, it's a big deal and I understand that. You know, I'm not trying to make myself out to be some kind of superstar. I'm not. I'm just an ordinary guy. But I know what it was like when I was watching, or still do, when I watch other people around the world. And if they make comment about me, I go, wow, this is terrific. Anyway, here we go. I'll jump in here. I'm jumping into my phone and go to there. Here we go. All right. From the top of the list down at the moment, anonymous, three days ago, that was John who does car removals on, my, on behalf of, uh, I put the, money in. Not my name, but I put it in anonymously because I couldn't put his name in for some strange reason. Barbara Brown, Colin Ansight, John Martin, John Franz, Damien Lambshed, Eric uh, For Forvet, I guess, Greg Wyatt, Katrina Mullen, Madeline Power, Paul Mumford, Juliet Felace. I think that's how I pronounce your name. John Wilson, he's the guy who organized it for John Lafferty. Alana Leckie, Jay Leckie, Jeff McClelland, Diane Bennett, Nathaniel Byrne, Stephen and Leanne Burton, Dennis McAllister, Michael Peel, John Porter, John Parra, Lynn Kelly, a couple of anonymouses, Debbie Watson, Jeffrey Parsons, Debbie Scott, Gifkins Dovetail, good on you, Cole, Peter Shepard, Kylie Johnson, Rosalie Krauss, Diane Bettis, uh, Helen Fala, F A W L A, Fala, maybe. Donna Manton, uh, Alison Sonneveld, Dale Reynolds, Jess Freck, and a couple more anonymouses. Graham Bland, who's here on the watching. Kelly Edwards, Peter Dane, also watching. Jeremy Carter, Lloyd Aylwood, Daryl Wells, more anonymous, anonymouses. <laughs> Tanya Higgins, Ian Kerry. Ian's been on the show. He's the idiot that got me hooked on Turner Planes. Thank you very much, Ian. You've cost me a small fortune. Sierra Wilson, Steve Bruford, John Gibbs, also watching. Lee Martin, more anonymous. Bryony Wilson, Julie Wilson, Carl Karcher, also watching. Me, 
Anonymous and John Wilson, another one right at the beginning to start it off. Thank you so much for all of those people. All you have to do is go in on the app and down the bottom there where it says donate now, do it. I think it's such a worthy cause. All right, we've got that sorted. Um, I am going to make a dust port for my little trim router table down the end. Now I'm developing another trim router table that's going to work in conjunction with my bench. Plans are all finished. There's just a couple of little things I've got to sort out and we'll be doing an expansion pack for this bench and it will incorporate having a trim router in it. So I'm just mucking around with a few ideas. Now, I realize that I get given things. You know that and I'm totally upfront about it. If I wasn't given things and how it was right at the beginning when I started this kind of this channel, I used a shop back that was, you know, a kind of a cheap one from, I don't know where I got it from, but it was, you know, it was very, very noisy and it lasted for about a year. I tried to convert it into a water and air filter. You probably remember those videos back in the day. Anyway, so what I've got now is I thought it might be an idea to show you something that I had recently purchased, maybe about, or when I say recently, maybe three years ago. It's this little guy. Now, this is a little vacuum, cyclone vacuum from, I think it was Big W I bought it, 60 odd dollars. 1800 watts. It's got one of these flexible hoses on it with this stupid thing here that goes into the wand. Now something that I didn't realize is this fitting is exactly the same diameter as my Festool 27 millimeter hose fitting. And I can put this straight into the Festool wand and it works brilliantly. The one that it came with is rubbish. You know, you're just scratching your head, why the hell did they even bother? So this is what we're going to use today. Now you can use this also with a dust deputy. Now dust deputy is basically a pre-filter. So cyclone spins all the dust out of the, out of the airstream that you're collecting from, like if I'm vacuuming the floor. And then all this is doing really is your HEPA filter. So you're using the cyclone to spin all of the large stuff out this will collect a lot of the fines and then there's a HEPA filter at the top here before it vents back out into the room. This is a great little unit. Like the Festool CT26s are around about $1,500. This was 60. This does not have the capacity for me to plug a tool into it but, and start automatically. But you'll find a lot of tools these days have Bluetooth and you can get little Bluetooth PowerPoints, all that kind of stuff. So you might be able to hook something up like that. But anyway, this is the one that I'm going to use. Now, I have the uh, Jackery over here. I have the saw stop job site saw right here. And one of the first things I'm going to do is plug the Jackery in and this little dust extractor, this, this little vacuum. <laughs> this, I'm being brave because I don't know if it's going to work. We'll see what happens. Now. When I plug it in, it's not going to be a good fit, but it's going to go up inside the exhaust port from the saw sufficiently to be able to get the fine, the fine dust. So I'm going to plug that in at the back here. And it's basically just stick it in and it should stay there, hopefully. You can go crazy with masking tape or duct tape and you know tape it all up so lock it together. I'll turn the other camera on so you can see what's happening. There it is sitting on top. Here we are, hello everyone. I've got to come around here. Excuse me, Pierre, you're, you're right there, buddy. Okay, so I have that and I'm gonna put that down on the floor. Just there, so I can reach it. I will plug the, uh, the Jackery. Now, why am, I using, why am I using the Jackery today when I used it last week? Two reasons. Bit of a contract arrangement that I have with these people. The other reason was because last week I had the battery, the additional battery. I've got the other, other battery over there that goes on top. Now, unlike a lot of these units, this has got an inbuilt two kilowatt hour battery. To be exact, it's uh, 2,042 watt hours. May not mean much to anyone, but it, uh, it means that I can push out two kilowatts of power for an hour straight. It's got three kilowatts capacity that can run a three kilowatt device. Let's uh, just a quick 
tip about that or quick explanation about that. Say I had two 1500 watt kettles. I don't know why, but I'm just saying that's, I'm trying to explain it. I plug both of those kettles in to this guy, two 1500 watt kettles, and that will pull 3000 watts, three kilowatts, well, not three kilowatt hours, three kilowatts. And it will do that for around two thirds of an hour. So that is 40 minutes. It will run those kettles for 40 minutes, the pair of them, off that one unit without an additional battery. And you can put five batteries on this thing. It's insane. Anyway, where am I at? What was I up to? So it's also got a six kilowatt surge. Now, if I was to have something else like this drill here, that's got an induction motor on it, not a brush motor, it has what's called a startup draw, a startup ampage. When I turn it on, it uses a whole lot more power than it does when it's just running and, and working. The startup is the big thing, like air conditioners. Anyway, I've talked enough about that. We're going to run the whole show on that. I will jump, pop that down on the floor and show you how it wheels around, like you know, one of those little airport luggage bags that has got the handle and got its own, it's got its own wheels. It's amazing. All right, plug this in. So I'll go to the other side so you can actually see it and say, hold on, Dave, I don't think I saw you plug that in. So just here, I'll turn that around just a bit. So you can see it plugged in there. That's going down to, you'll see the uh, ampage pop up there. And the If the battery is full and I'm using something that, let's say I've got 200 watts of solar panel powering this and I'm using something that's maybe 150 watts, like let's say I've got a USB-C cable in there. USB-C is 100 watts and I'm just, maybe I'm charging my phone and it might be pulling 18 watts. It's not going to make any difference to the battery. It will pull the power from the solar panels right through this unit into the appliance that I'm using. Same thing with the mains. If I've got it plugged into the mains and I'm pulling two and a half kilowatts, like 2,500 watts, if the battery is full, pass through straight the way through, turn the mains off, it's got a UPS uninterrupted power supply in here. It says 20 milliseconds, I've, test, I've tested it. If you have a look at the video that I did all about this, have a look back through my links or through the videos that I've done. And I had my um, NBN box, which is the National Broadband Network and also my modem for the uh, for my internet connection didn't miss a beat did not miss a beat and those things are very very fussy so but they do say check with check it first before you dedicate it to a medical machine or anything like that Enough's on how easy is that and that it's so comfortable styling there we go around to the other side across the top there no dust is going to fall down there it just lands on the top here. All right, um, we're going to cut the end off my, this guy here. Now, I use this as a sacrificial end when I'm cutting on the table saw or the router table. I'm gonna pop it on here, wind this guy up a little higher. I have the rip blade in, but it's gonna do the job, okay? First thing I do is on your watch the current come up, can you see it up here? There? <laughs> okay, it's having a look, it's checking. I'm waiting for the red light to finish. Okay, I'm gonna turn it on first. Wait for the noise, watch the current. Now I'm gonna turn the vacuum on.
I think it pulled out. There we go. What's happened? Yep. Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> it could be our own captions. We could have a lot of fun. You, you could. You could. But I think I've got sound back again. What happened was the microphone, uh, three and a half, three and a half mil, three pin, just pulled out of the uh, road just a, a little bit. Anyway. Thank you. Thank you. Anyway. How long was that going for? No audio. Let me know how long we were out with... Don't exaggerate it. Just let me know. Anyway, I don't know what I said there. Uh, yes, you could have filled your own captions in, definitely. Next thing we're going to do is drill a hole. So I'm, what I had mentioned was how good the dust extraction was down there. The only problem is, because it's not a perfect fit, I'm going to turn it on and... Uh, just check that it still works. There we go. It works. Done. All right. Now, I'll explain what I'm going to do. I will disconnect this guy and that one out. And push that back so you can see what's happening with the jackery. All right. Okay, now, too long. About four minutes. Thanks, John. Thanks, everyone. Have a laugh at Dave's expense. <laughs> Great. All good. All good. About six minutes silence. Well, probably there's probably some people who are quite happy about that. I'm going to move the table saw out of the way. Ah, it's just one of those things, you know, it wasn't the, uh, wasn't anyone's fault, apart from mine. Where are we? I'll move this out of the way. The reason I want to move it is I want to bring the camera in a little bit closer. There we go. Don't know if you can see what's happening here or not. Maybe, 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 maybe. All right, my plan now is to put a Forstner bit in here and drill a hole through possibly this and this together. Now, I could put that on there and do it like that. Give me a second. I just have to do a quick measurement down the back here. All good. All good. Now, I think I might have to drill a hole first and lock these two together. So basically, I'm using this as a mount, and we're going to cut a hole in here that's going to go back to a hole back here. And we're going to have a hole through the top here that is where I plug the, um, the nozzle from the dust extractor. It's a very, 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 very simple method. But I'd like to possibly screw those together first. I need to find a small drill. None in there. Got one here. Uh, take that out and put that in. I think it's going to be the way. I'll put that back on there. I'm a little bit disorganized. Apart from losing sound, I haven't got a couple of things set up that I wanted to have set up. The main thing is we didn't lose any sound while I was reading people's names out, or the generous people. This is good. That's even better. All right, back over to this camera here for the moment. So if you're watching and you've only just recently tuned in, I did make comment about everyone who had um, made a donation in the GoFundMe for John to have somewhere to hang out while he's got to stay in, in uh, Sydney for two months after he's... It's a massive operation. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. 
See you later, Cole. All right. This is a couple of holes so that I can put a screw in here. Give me a second, I'll go and get a, a screw or two. As I said, this is live. Um, but <laughs> proof being given that the, uh, the sound went on the video and I had no idea. Ordinarily, if I was doing a real video, I would have been swearing and cursing and kicking around like a very upset person. There we go, I've got a couple of screws there. Hey Pierre, you good boy. And back here. Look out, buddy. And a screwdriver. I got one here. Actually, is my Yankee in there? No, it's in the toolbox. So how was Cole's show this morning? Is everyone learning heaps of stuff from Cole? He's a wonderful person giving his time freely like that. What do we got here? Ron, morning Dave. So I'm late, have an excuse. COVID, oh, that's no good. Dave, I see the Jackery 3600 peak what unit on sale at Harbour Freight. I have no idea what the dollars in the States are. So I can't, I can't tell you, I can't make comment. Okay, that's gonna. Oh. <laughs> it went straight in a bloody hole. I'm gonna have to do another. <sighs> what a wally. What, sorry, what a, what a turkey. Okay, so just come to the side. I can't believe that. I was wondering why it was turning nice and easy. <laughs> Only on live, hey? Um, where are me and your granddaughter shortcuts? Short shout outs. Oh, I hadn't seen them. Hi Zoe, hi, da hi darling, how are you? Yeah, look, make, <laughs> make my wife happy and say hello to her, would you please everyone? Just swamp her, say hi Vicky, hi Vicky. Hi Zoe, hi Zoe. Yeah. These needy people, I just don't understand. Anyway. So we have this screw together now. That's pretty basic. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to send a Forstner bit down around this to create a hole that's going to be pretty much the right diameter for this. We shall see if it's going to be any good. I may have to do a bit of tape, but we'll see what happens. Back over to the other camera. You had a sound for all of Cole's show. Thanks, John. Thank you. Um, yeah, there you go. There you go, baby. Are you going to be happy now? We'll go to the other camera. All right, so I have this here. I'm going to move this setup back so I can come back to about there I think yeah about there's good bring this up about there unlock it about there that looks good enough take all of this back a little bring this down and go backwards until I'm close to center it doesn't it's not super important you know why this is a prototype, and if it works, that's great. If it doesn't, well, there you go. Now my dust extraction will be here. High tech. Probably not going to work, but we'll see. There we go. Push it in and see if it works at all. I have no idea if it's going to work. Now I think. I need, what size force and a bit do I want? Now I don't have a force and a bit at the moment, do I? Let's see if this one's going to fit too big. But it might have to do. What else have I got? That's the next one. 
I don't know if I've got the right size. That's going to be too small. I can't find my inch and three eighth force my bit for some strange reason. Maybe I threw it away. I don't know. Anyway, um, I may end up just putting a little bit of ma um, masking tape, not masking tape, you know, the other stuff. I was sure I had a bit that might have worked. Give me a second, I'm having a quick look around. No. Oh, I know what I'm going to do. I, I, know, I know what I'm going to do. So I'm going to drill at that. That's the time going. Are you doing, are you doing heaps of entries into the competition? Not the competition, the giveaway. So I'm going to have that there. Let me see if it's going to be close enough to the right spot. The great thing with the Forstner bit is it doesn't have to follow anything. It can cut cleanly. It would be good to be able to clamp that down. So I might see if I can put a clamp on this end just to hold that steady. I don't want to block your vision too much though. So. Okay. All looking good. Now, don't worry about that <laughs> standing up. Well, I'm starting to worry about it standing up in the air. It doesn't look too good, does it? There. That's a whole lot better. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the this on, and I've got to plug in the extension lead for this guy over here to the jackery. And... All right. Turn on the, this, the drill press to start. You can watch the jackery's 300 watts, and then turn this on, the dusty, pulling more power, it's a great setup, and then we're going to use the force in a bit, I don't know if I've got it too fast or not, is the sound still working, yes it is, get another purchase here, I think, I think I've got a little bit more to go. I think that's it. Take this out of here, just to show that it does work, but... There we go. Turn that one off. Come back over to the other camera. There we go. So now I have that hole through there. And next thing I want to do, I should have worn the G6 eye muffs. I was going to say you can wear these kind of with that. Works fine. Not a problem. I'm not going to put it on to show you because something will probably go wrong and I look even sillier than I do at the moment. All right. Needy, put up with you. Yeah, thank you. So you can't believe Dave made you wrangle that snake when you claim he took <laughs> Carl. Um, uh, all right. Okay, all right, that's all good. Now, this top one I'm going to undo and I'm not going to do anything to it. It's, that's basically finished. So whip this out. 
Yes. If you didn't know during the week, uh, woke up, you know, eyes half closed, wander into the bathroom, go to jump in the shower, and there's a bloody snake on the floor. <laughs> he'd, he'd been eating. There was a lizard. You could see the big bulge in his tummy. It wasn't a big snake. He was only about, you know, about that long, I guess. And he would have been about as thick as the screwdriver handle. And a, an aggressive style of snake, definitely. Anyway, um, that was a, not an interesting way to wake up at all. Uh, so I had to, had to process. Normally I'd jump in the shower to wake up in the morning and a cup of coffee. Well, the bloody snake was in the way. So there you go. All right, now I'm going to create a, an inlet. This is our bottom section. So I'm going to create an inlet here. And then we're going to cut something as well. So I'm, I'm thinking, I'm doing thought process as I'm going along. So, morning Mike, how are you? I'm, I'm wondering whether I need to create a, an angled area or not. And if I do create an angled area, it might be nice if it was um, symmetrical. So I might use the, um, the sliding bevel if I have it here. I should have it here. I love this toolbox. There's a square, but that's not a sliding bevel. There, there it is, found it. All right, so this is a sliding bevel for those that don't know. And for those that do know, that's great. Good, I'm happy for you. <laughs> All right. Now this bevel is, this is a Veritas bevel. This is fine for joinery, but on a work site, not so good. The reason being this clamp isn't super tight. You can tighten it up a little bit, but even when you clamp it, it's not, I prefer the one that's got the real hard one at the end. Because if I'm marking out rafters every, I'm dropping it on the ground and it will hold its form. This one is a little bit more delicate, may I say. I think if I do something about there, I think that'll be lovely. Now, have I got Carl Cam happening? Let's see. Could be interesting. Carl Cam, Carl Cam, Carl Cam, where are you? There we go. Not watching the jackery at the moment, but you can see where I'm at. This is the port. I'm going to create an angle there and just flip it over. And that will give me symmetry. And that will make my OCD content. Can you see that? That's going to be the opening. All right, I've got a few ways I could do it. Um, and you know what? I might use the Japanese saw. Why not? We've got a bit of time. So how I'm going to do that is on my bench. And I'll use one of the little micro jig clamps. One of the other things I'm about to make, and that's why I'm doing using my small router tape, is I'm going to make another box for that toolbox. And it's going to be similar to a knife block, but I don't know if you know the style that I'm talking about. I'm going to make a very shallow drawer that fits in there under the bigger drawer by about that much. And it can slide backwards and forwards so I can put my hands around it and take it out. It's going to be a shelf with a rim, basically. So it's going to dovetail joints all around, rebated floor into it, and then in the top, it's going to have a piece of wood that's got some slots cut in it. So I can put my, not, put my saws in that way. Click, 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 click across. Because the thing that's a big enemy of a saw is if the set is stuffed. If someone drops a tool on top of it, like if the saws are floating around in there and getting damaged, they're going to be fine the first day you use it. And then after that, they're not going to work anymore. And you're going to be so upset with them. And just, it's, it, it won't end well. so easy. This is, I love this bench. Keep your eyes open for when I release the plans for the, for the mega expansion pack. And I'm thinking what I might do is with the expansion pack is I'll sell the whole bench with the pack as a unit. It'll be a discounted price. Or if you want to buy 
the expansion pack plans. Um, I think it might be five bucks or something like that. It'll be worthwhile doing it because they're going to be really, really nice. John does a beautiful job of drawing, and I have explained that before. And here's my Japanese saw. It's a pull saw. Go to the other camera. Tip that up just a touch. Um, here. It's probably not the best side for it. I'm hoping I can do this without disconnecting. Yeah, move the drill press back. Now this is not a powered tool, is it? It's just, it's Dave powered. So you can see it's being held in position here at the front. The thing I like about this setup is that the clamp stays there. It's not going to fall out. If I was using this style of clamp in there, well, that's fine, but it, see that? Drops down out of the way all the time. Can you see? No, you can't see it. <laughs> I'm being an idiot. Go back a bit further. There, see that? Putting it in there, you've got to be two hands to do it up and all that kind of stuff, and then you let go. This one, one hand. I'll do it in a second, as you can see. So set that up there. See how easy that is? I'll do this cut here. Who else likes Japanese saws? I love them. nearly finished. I'm not going to worry about getting the spindle sander out to do the rest of it. Uh, we'll pop this in here. Go to Carl Cam again. There we go. And down from here. Duh. Cut the camera in the wrong spot. And down. Yeah, I'm sorry about the sound dying. There we go. That's it. There's the port. It's just like in the head of a motor, you know. A valve, a port for a valve somewhere. Let's try it. Let's try it. So we've got 15 minutes. Ah, back to this one. So there you go. That's, that's it. So this is the inlet, and we're going to put the, uh, the hose in there. But what I need to do is, remember I said that that hose is going to be a little bit loose. It's not going to fit properly. I can't tread on that cable. I'll lose, the, lose that camera, and that'd be terrible. So this is, this is what I mean. This is, this is my little plan to get around that. Going into there, it's slopping all over the place. I don't want that to happen. So I have one of these. Now these are a kind of a very hard rubber fitting and it's stepped. It's basically it's designed for these kind of things. So I'm going to slide that into there and see where it's going to. Okay, you can see now it's buried itself in there. This is going to be the interesting part for people that know all, know everything all the know-alls <laughs> and there'll probably be know-alls that know this one too so i'm going to cut this rubber um, on halfway through the second step so i'm going to cut it off here and i could probably do that with my japanese saw and a really easy way to do it would be to put it in there and pull it up against that but if i do that 
there, that's going to be a pain. So I'm not going to do that. That's not the easy way to do it. Uh, it is this one, isn't it? So I'm just going to hold it there and do it like this. I could use a hacksaw if I wanted to. I wouldn't go using the drop saw. Rotate it around so I'm not going to be cutting into the into the job that we're doing. Oh, that's the worst cut I've ever done in my life, David. Don't you? Don't anyone look at it? Look away. <laughs> okay, so you can see that was pretty easy. And now when I push it in, you can see it's in nice and tight. There's the inlet, and then the hose goes into here. And it did work this morning. Let's take it out and check. Maybe I have to put it in first before. Yep, that's it. So there's a tip. There it is. It's in. Let's have a look if it goes in here now. Pull it back just a little bit. Because it's rubber, it flexes. Something I haven't seen or considered. There we go. That will work. Let's go and try it. I'm going to take this down the end, unplug it from the jackery here. And this is going to be the next part of what I like about this device. Remember how I said it's just like airport luggage, like a carry-on bag at the airport? Okay, I'm going to uh, bring the camera down here. Whilst you're watching, Pierre, don't tread on that lead. He's looking for a place to go to sleep. He's, uh, he's a funny dog. He, you know how long he's taken to become accustomed and trusting us here. You right there, buddy? It's taken forever. But he's coming good. I think that will work. Tip that up like that. Sorry guys, it's just this little stuff in the background that I'm doing. Now, you can see it's on 83% here. 83%, 99.8 hours, all that kind of stuff. Um, there you go. I'm gonna take it down the end. Couple of handles to take it off. And then, uh, I don't know if I've done that terribly well. It's basically, it's got a handle that I'm pulling up. That you can see I've got the handle here and I can tip it over and roll it. I'm dragging it along behind me now. Now for something that is a fair weight, that's pretty good. I'll spin it around and do the other camera. Where are we? Cool. I won't be able to read any of the comments while I'm doing this. So I can show you from here. Again. Wheels around, easy. And then when you, you want to close it up, on the video I pushed all these buttons, you don't need to. It's just this one at the top here, I'll tip this up. This one here, you push that in, down. Same thing, to lift it up, push down. I think it's wonderful. Anyway, uh, let's plug in. What are we gonna plug in? I'm gonna plug in the router and also the shop vac. So this is my little DeWalt trim router, which is one and a quarter horse. And then the 
not the shop vac, this guy. The little vacuum cleaner. All right. Now, tip this up to about there. I'll come down to the other end and do a quick read. We've still got about six or seven minutes left. Still got sound, yes. All right. Just taking that out and grabbing some coffee. Now down the end here, what I have, this is my large dust extractor and it works, it works really well, but this is an expense. So what I've done is I've made this little port and these guys, I'll just undo these. There's a couple of 5 16 T-bolts and I've ground the sides of them flat so that they'll fit into the Craig Mini Track. I wasn't aware when I made this the, the Craig Mini Track and the Rockler Track, different, different sizes. And it makes a big difference. What I want to do now is create a couple of holes for these. And I think if I've got that there, that's going to well so I can bring these forward till about there. Actually, I can look straight over the top and that will give me a very good indication as to where I'm going to be. A mark here and a mark here. And, and I already have a drill bit in the drill here. Now, oh, come on, you can do it. I haven't gone all the way through on purpose. Can you tell me why? I don't want to tear out. I'll go all the way through now. If you go all the way through, you'll get a rotten exit. So those exits are pretty good. All right, drop those onto there and go backwards. Is it going to fit or not? Nope, a little bit out, but it's not going to stress me. I should have measured, but I didn't. So what I can do now, and it's not going to worry me, is to have it at a bit of an angle, because the jig goes at a bit of an angle. So I can bring that back to about there, tighten that up. Bring this hose up and around the back. If I bring that all the way over there, actually I might even just put it up on the bench over the back there. That'll work. Put this in. Done. All right, let's see if it draws air properly where I want it. That's looking pretty cool. That's running off this. It's a simple thing, I know. I know it's a simple thing. But man, oh man, it makes me happy. Turn him off. Cole's H10, I think it is. H10 jig. And I've got a tiny dovetail cutter in there that's for his H10 jig. Let's put this in. Camp for Laurel, if you can only smell this. Drop that in there. I'll get another clamp, because that's the way you're supposed to do it. If I only did it. I can do it with one, but if something was to go wrong, I, you know. It's just, it's not worth knocking around. Using a machine, use it how it's supposed to be used. Push that down. Is it pushing down? 
Oh, I wonder why that is. Maybe there's a bit of a back angle on it. Relax that more. There we go. There, that's nice. Sitting nicely. I'm going to put that camera so you can see the dust extraction happen properly. I think if we put it there, you should be able to see it. Now this is the thing, with this jig, and with any jig similar, as you're using it, the, all the dust goes straight out that way. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna turn it on without the dust extraction to start, and I'll show you what I mean. So I'll do a couple of uh, dovetails first. I'll get the eye muffs. Don't forget to enter. Don't forget to enter. It's worldwide, you can enter anywhere in the world. It's not just Australia. My patrons got a head start. They've had a, they've, they've known about it for, for four days and they've been entering away. So they've got a head start on everyone else. All right, I'm gonna turn the trim router on. See that? Now you watch. See the dust coming out? Right, that's pretty obvious. I'm gonna turn the dust extraction on and bring it up close. You watch. I think about there is gonna be good. Move all that out of the way. Beautiful. Here we go. Now the jackery is on 1,432. Let's see what happens when I turn this on. 2,100 at the startup. Now it's back on. It's only pulling another 150 odd watts while it's running. You watch this. Can you see any dust? off absolutely nothing turn this one off and I'll take this up the other end now they're only tiny 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 um, cutouts that I did but it works so well and it's so easy to make if I had sound, it would have been a better show. Um, but look, that's get yourself one of these if you find that you've got a, a vacuum that just doesn't you know, fit any of your, the jigs or, or what you have. Or you could spend a lot more time cutting the hole out, making it you know, really nice with a rasp, all that kind of stuff. Or just use one of these rubber inserts. But they're all the little dovetails. And that's the size of the dovetails I'm going to be using to make this um, Japanese saw till in my toolbox. The, uh, that just went, went so beautifully. And it was, it's so cheap. As I say, if, you, if, if you've got, especially with the interest rates going crazy at the moment, if you don't have uh, the funds available to buy a high-tech dust extractor, go into one of these department stores, buy a little cheapy. If it's HEPA and also if it's cyclonic inside, it'll work, but even the old bag ones. But the thing is with the sawdust, it tends to clog the bags up a bit. So a cyclone one is best. And you know, spend up to $100. The only thing is that you have to push the button. That's no big deal. Uh, again, I'm hoping everyone has uh, done Payments into John's GoFundMe is such a worthy cause. It really is. And I'm sure he'll be over the moon if we can get it up to $10,000. I'm going to do a quick read down here. Um, it's simple things that make us happy. Carl, are you on Facebook? Uh, it's like to talk Jackery at Harbour Freight with you 
uh, same, send me a friend request, okay? Sean, it's been a good one tonight, Dave. Have a good week. Catch you all soon. Um, Nosta, okay, that's Welsh. Wally, hi, Carl. Yes, on Facebook. Um, Carl, hmm, there are seven chaperons. Well, it's a popular name. Popular name. All right, we're going to have the patrons meeting in a minute. Give me a second just to uh, turn all this off and get, get the patrons meeting up. And uh, look after yourselves. Be nice to each other. Why has that happened? I don't know. I don't know why any of that has happened. Anyway, go to channel, pin message, report. Oh, that's you, Carl. All right. Um, yeah, I don't know what we're going to do next week, but it might be fun. So I'll see you all next week. Look after yourselves. Be nice to each other. And if my mouse would work, I could come back over. It's not coming off this page. Oh, there it is. I was watching the wrong thing. See you later.